Hey guys, this is Nigel from Game Adventures. I want to take you back to the year 1902 in the town of Launceston, Tasmania. And the reason for that is, imagine if you lived in 1902 and you wanted to communicate. Well, you'd usually write a letter because there weren't computers, there weren't telephones. You'd actually write a letter. And so you'd go to your local stationery shop and you'd buy paper. Now, here's the thing. In 1902, if you wanted to buy some writing paper, you'd actually buy it in what they called a quill. And it was large sheets of paper, usually rolled up, and you know, you'd cut them to the size you wanted or, or whatever. And that was fine, but a bit inconvenient because it was raining, the paper would get wet if it was blowing, if it was windy outside after you bought it, the paper would fly about or it'd get doggy. It wasn't the most convenient way of purchasing paper, but it's what you did, right? So, a young guy called J.A. Birchall at the time, who owned a stationery shop in Launceston, which incidentally is still there, saw this and noticed it and came up with a really ingenious idea. He thought to himself, well, what if you cut the paper down so it's a more manageable size? And then what if you sold a number of those sheets, but you put them on a hard backing board so they wouldn't float around, it's easier to carry. And then after thinking about that, he went, well, hang on, what if you get a bit of glue and just gum up one edge? And so you'd have, you'd buy some paper on a bit of backing board and glued on one edge. A Tasmanian from Launceston invented the note writing pad as we know it today. Now, what happened in actuality was, you know, he went back to his manufacturer who were, who were in England and said, look, I've got this great idea, can you do this? And, and they kept hedging it. They kept going, well, no, that's a bit of a hassle. No, that's not how we do that. You know, no, we've never done it that way before. And he kept persevering because he knew that it would be of benefit to his clients. And ultimately, ultimately, that is what happened. He managed to buy the paper, uh, glue it up on a bit of backing board and invented, as I said, the notepad. And of course, it, it went rampant throughout the globe. Now, Here's what I love about this story. Birchall saw a gap in the market. He saw a gap in his customers' needs. Not necessarily what they wanted. No one actually walked in, as far as we know anyway, and said, look, can I buy some paper, but can you cut it down, put it on board and glue it? No, Birchall tapped into a need of his clients. He understood that buying paper in the traditional way was a hassle and that it actually wasn't very useful at times, especially in bad weather after they left his shop. And, you know, it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson in innovation because innovation and, you know, good ideas obviously need to solve a problem. But sometimes, sometimes your clients don't actually know what their problem is. They have it, but they don't know what it is. And it's up to us in servicing our clients and understanding our clients to find those gaps. Talk soon.